The state of Arkansas has waited patiently for its moment in the sun. And as the son of the White House, and now you have the honor of being the last to present here uh, Thank today, the uh, Connect Care, and we're represented by Ray Henley and uh, Roy Jeffers. Yeah, it's indeed a pleasure to be here and an honor. You know, Medicaid covers 38 million people in the country. It'll spend $160 billion this year. You know, the challenge is for all the states and a lot of counties is to manage that, to manage it for access and cost control. What we think we have developed is a replicable way to do that. We did this in a three-step process. We started with the AVEX system. Everybody remembers the Clinton Health Card, the electronic card. That didn't happen. AVEX did. Where all our patients are equipped with a plastic magnetic card. Point of sale technology uh, information appears on the screen about them when they go for health care. Claim is transmitted in 20 seconds electronically. Data is captured, managed. The historical hassle factor, paper, claims, denials, is gone. Uh, and what this did, it brought the providers back in droves. It worked so well, the providers now pay the state of Arkansas to submit a Medicaid claim. This might be the best testimony. Step two of that process was the creation of Connect Care itself, and I'm going to refer to my colleague here to uh, tell you about that. Connect Care is Arkansas Medicaid's managed care program. It is a primary care network that has 1,700 primary care physicians that have asked for a million patients. Now, the interesting thing about that is, is that there's only going to be about 180,000 patients that would ever enter this system. So as Ray told you, the AVEX system got people excited to participate in Medicaid. So much so that at one time, one of the things you always heard about Medicaid was, well, I can't get my claim paid. It's an unworkable system. Now the only thing that we really hear complaints about is, well, this person is trying to attract the patient to their practice when I have them in my practice. We didn't do this just on our own. We had some key partnerships, one of which is EDS, which is what Ray alluded to to help us with the technology. But we did this with both private and public agencies too. The Department of Health has helped us develop the system and operate it. We've had some key partnerships with the medical community, Arkansas Medical Society, Arkansas Hospital Association, individual physicians, and also individual hospitals. All of that together has brought together information that goes to the patients, information that goes to the, to the individual providers themselves, and that technology has been able for us to develop reports that go back to the provider network, tell them exactly how much the patients are costing, how they're utilizing their services, and help them affect a better health delivery system. To give you an example of how that has all come together, we've actually been able to lower our emergency room utilization by 60%. Now, that is a real key area in Medicaid because that is where Medicaid patients traditionally received their health care because they didn't have access into the same health care system that you and I did. Some of the other key points that, that I would bring to you too, a uh, evaluation that was done of the program through a state university found that the program actually saved $30 million. Now, in state government, that's also a key issue too. But I think one of the key important pieces here is that Medicaid patients for the first time feel like they are a participant in the healthcare system. They have a way of choosing the physician, they have a way of communicating with that physician, and one of the most important things that I think all of us that involve ourselves with physicians is that they have confidence in that person that they're interested in. As Ray said, this is a third building block for what we're doing with healthcare in Arkansas. I'm going to defer to him to tell you where we're going next. Now we we're doing all this on a 4% overhead and there's not an HMO in the country that. But the third step of this has been the Our Kids First program that came up September the 1st. We're extending coverage to all uninsured kids to 200% of poverty. We're doing this with a modified Medicaid package. It looks like an insurance package. It has co-payments. It's managed with the point of sale technology. When the uh, patient shows up, they know who the assigned doctor is. They know whether a co-payment's due or not. Uh, they can differentiate you know, this from the regular Medicaid uh, covered child. Not only are we we're going to approach universal coverage of children in Arkansas, we could not have done that without uh, the Connect Care program to establish the network, the ABEX technology to manage it. Uh, and we are truly uh, pleased we're going to go from what uh, used to be fourth in the country in the percentage of uninsured children to perhaps third uh, in the nation when uh, our kids first is fully implemented. 
And that is something that uh, we're indeed very proud of. And with that, uh, we'll go to Louis. Louis. Uh, no, there's not. Uh, you know, Arkansas is a very rural state. Uh, it had almost no managed care penetration, less than 10%. Uh, frankly, uh, the regular commercial managed care uh, wouldn't have worked. Uh, but we were able to bring the physicians in, uh, got them interested. Uh, we went from they had no accounts receivable because of the way this technology worked. They participated, they made concessions to us. And this electronics, obviously, in this computerized age, you can reach anywhere. And if this will work in Arkansas, the same technology uh, will overlay uh, in any other state. And it will save a lot of money, both in postage and, and the printing. Uh, we got our investment back in 17 months. Uh, it can be done as well. Okay. Will it continue to work as effectively in a capitated environment? Uh, I don't know. Uh, right now, we don't see the need to do a capitated environment because we're doing everything a good HMO does. We've got a uh, five to one capacity, which allows us to take these report cards and, and the physicians are measured one against the other. And we're not going to contract with people whose utilization is too high, whose emergency room use is inappropriate. Uh, I think it would, but right now, we don't have a plan to do that in the future. Just come at that a different way, and that is, what about the states that already have an HMO environment who might look at this, would it be valuable to them? Yes. So, and, and that's what I was going to follow up with you. Actually, we were having questions raised, inquiries from uh, other states that are already doing the intervention to find out how they can utilize the system. And our physicians who, who both participate with us in an HMO tell us uh, time after time they get better information on their patients back from us because of the information that we collect and give back to them than they get from the HMOs they contract with. So certainly an HMO could benefit from this, uh, this technology. I was um, wanted to ask you about a couple of statements in your application. Uh, and one says that physicians with, quote, high usage, usage rates are, end quote, are targeted for, quote, utilization review. And it also says that, the, that you try to educate Medicaid clients about how to use the healthcare systems properly. And it just, those two sentences together made me feel like there's a lot of push toward reduced care. If I can speak to the utilization the target on the physicians and my boys speak to the uh, education. But what we do, this system monitors the physician's performance. And if we've got a physician who's ordered a lot more tests than his peer group or whose caseload has a much higher versus room use, then that allows us to appropriately target that physician for an educational visit and in showing uh, how he compares with his peer group. That's what we meant to emphasize there. Uh, not in a negative context. And as far as the education for the recipient, uh, again, we've developed things such as refrigerator magnets. That sounds simple, but to give the Medicaid patient an idea, this is the person's telephone number. Call them first rather than go to the emergency room. Materials that go out to tell people, this is how you utilize your primary care doctor. Utilize them for preventive health care. We have radio and TV spots that emphasize particularly showing a pleasant experience in the doctor's office as opposed to going to the emergency room for non-urgent care and then just waiting for, for long hours. And what, I had one quick follow-up on that. Uh, do I understand correctly that you send in the, that the, pro, the claim gets sent in before the patient sees the doctor? No. no it's done at the point of sale, uh, point of uh, service. And that's, uh, understood. that's fine. And if I can back up and uh, add one more thing to the viewing the physician. We review not only for, for negative aspects, but, but things like immunization rates and mammograms. If a physician's uh, rate of immunizations or, or mammograms is lower than uh, it should be, lower than the norm, we're going to make an educational contact about that. So it's not only a punitive measure, but it's also to, to uh, show him he, he can do more to be positive for a well, well a child or prevent health problems. 